So I'm trying to fix this Datron here. This is the other repair, my second unit to fix, which I also recently got, which has got this ugliness on the front panel here, so you can go to tell the difference. So I've already found a couple of problems with it, and that's that these plugs weren't plugged in. This one here, this one here, and this one over here. The screws of this board are not in, or there's a couple missing. I haven't found them in the chassis, so hopefully they're not wedged somewhere. These pins are bent on this one, so I'm gonna fix this, and I'll plug this in and we'll see what happens. Well, the spell I'm getting is this, All right? And these other buttons here aren't working. All right, let's pair it up and see if plugging this in has fixed anything else. Okay, still getting OL. Let's try these buttons. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. All right, just do a self test. There's no hold or manual on. Usually, you can hit manual or scroll through the errors or reset. Just do a test. Here we go, it's display testing. That looks actually really good, that display. That looks really nice. So, error 5. And then pass. I can't remember the sequence now. One would be Ohm's board, one is the AC, one's DC. Error OL. So, my other unit's doing three errors. <laughs> so, actually, no, it's doing two, it's the other two errors. So, this one's got some different ones, but similar. Error OL won't go away. Now, on my other unit, I actually found that this adjustment in the back here, L2, wasn't set correctly. And once I corrected that, the error OL went away. So it's probably the same problem. And that's the PRL adjustment for the 50 hertz line frequency, at least in my case, 50 hertz. So I need to look at doing that adjustment there, I think. Um, it looks like it's been rounded all the way out, which wasn't on my other unit. The voltage is supposed to be 1.05 volts at the test point over here. It wasn't doing that. It was putting out a waveform. So chances are this is going to be the same problem. Let's have a good look around, check all these other plugs, make sure they're all plugged in like they're supposed to be. Everything appears to be plugged in on this side. So there's only stuff on the other side which wasn't plugged in. That's okay. This actually looks more promising than the other unit was. So that's a good thing, but it's going to be recapping us the bonnet, certainly. So this may or may not be a problem. There's four posts here, which are used for mounting something. I think it's resistors tuning for the voltage reference here. So I think there's tuning resistors that's supposed to plug in there. My other unit's only got one resistor in this post there. Um, across those, the other one is empty. That could be normal, it could be a problem, I don't actually know. Just something to bear in mind for, my, for this repair video that these posts aren't populated for some reason. It could be for tuning only, it may not matter. I have to look into it. So a common failure on these units, apparently, is all these capacitors along here. Now on the other unit, when I tested those, all of them were bad. So I expect that this is going to be the same as well, that all these capacitors here will be bad as well. And so that will be something I need to look at doing. Luckily there's not many capacitors in here. So basically these ones here and the ones in the power supply. So it's not that much to do. So it's not a big deal. So I'm going to just keep looking over it and see if I can see anything else which is wrong. But a good thing is that the battery's in here. I've checked the voltage and it's 3.7 volts. So that battery is still good. And it actually says 0887 on that battery. 87, it's 30 years later, or 33 years later, and it's still going. That's amazing. Okay, so I've just changed the jumper over for 240 volts, well 230 volts. Let's change the fuse. I rarely show this in videos. I'd usually just do it later on. So let's pull the fuse out. I mean, when I did the last unit, the fuse was completely the wrong value. This one here is 2 amp fuse. So the last one was 5 amp fuse. This is a 2 amp fuse. It's supposed to be a 500 milliamp for 115 volts and 160 milliamp for 230 volts. That's what's on the back panel there. So 2 amps is completely wrong fuse. Okay, so that's the fuse here for the correct rating. It's a 250 milliamps is the smallest one I've got on hand right now. I need to get some more fuses I've run out of the smaller ones. So it's still a lot better than 2 amps. Let's plug this in. I've got it set to say 240 volts now, or 230 volts. Variac is already powered up at 221. Turn this power switch on, make sure it doesn't go bang. Putting 33 watts, 0.16 amps, which is actually quite high. It should be a little bit lower than that. The other unit is only doing about 20 watts and like 22 watts, so it's putting 10 watts more for some reason. It does have this extra board in the back here, maybe it's something to do with it. It's also got this extra AC board in here, maybe that's something to do with it. Could it draws a bit more power from that, but I wouldn't thought it'd be significant. I'm obviously speculating here, but yeah, it's not too bad. 26 it starts off as just about 33 watts. And if I do a self test, see if that changes that wattage at all. It's sitting at 32 the whole time. Go to the next test, test pass, next one, yeah. The wattage stays about the same the whole time. It's kind of working. 
So what I'm doing right now is just going around lifting chips up and putting them back down again just to work all the connections because it's a common issue on these as well is that the chips will give, give bad connections and can give you some weird behaviours. So it's just a good idea on these just to go around and just lift them all up a little bit and then reseat them. You see I'm just kind of doing one end and rocking it a little bit and that's working both ends. So it's just a very really minor thing. This is where having some angled tweezers is really handy for this because it's really easy to get underneath the chip and just lever it up gently. It's quite good for that. As you can see I'm doing it twice for each chip just to give it a chance to actually um, have an effect because you know while I'm here I might as well do it a bit better. I mean you could pull them right out the offset and clean the actual leads up and that sort of stuff um, but unless you know specifically that that chip is bad there's no point doing it really unless you sort of think of it. Hey yeah so it's got a bit more of an issue than just a little bit of a wiggle will do. Maybe there's a bit of corrosion or something like that in there. So it's pretty easy to do as you can see. But it's just a bit tedious and a bit time consuming. Um, you know it's not it's not at all hard. Oh, a bit of a pain really. That's those two boards done. I think the display board's okay, although I'm not sure about the button press stuff. So maybe I'll do this board at the front here as well. I'll do I'll do this whole side and then I'll flip it over and start doing the other side. I won't, I won't record the whole thing. Just want to show you a little bit so you get an idea. And obviously if you're reseating chips on this board you have to be careful because in my other board it doesn't matter because the battery's already gone but this one's intact so therefore the calibration constant should hopefully still be here and so what I've got to do, these four chips here I can't tell which exactly which ones it was but this is part of these four they are the memory so you have to make sure you don't reseat those ones because if you lift it out and you lose power you lose your constants and you lose your calibration you've got to do it all again so those ones, leave them alone all right, so we've gone around and reseated every single chip on both sides of the boards. Let's power it up again and see if anything has changed. I'll be surprised. That, you know, it's unlikely to be that easy. All right. Hmm. No, I've got nothing. What's going on here? No current draw. Is this plug loose? No. What's happened here? Uh, no power draw. That's curious. Completely dead. Hmm. Well, I guess this fuse didn't like you much current. This fuse is blown. I guess I'll increase it very slightly. Alright, so I've replaced the fuse. This is what happens. We have 33 watts again. So 160 milliamps. I don't know why that current draws a little bit high. Let's see if we get anything different over here. After we see those chips, nothing so far. Let's do a test. Error 5, same as before, and pass, and error OL, no different. So nothing's changed, so there probably wasn't anything wrong with those chips as far as the seatings, but at least now I know they've been done. So I thought I'd pull the EEPROMs out of this thing and read them all, so I've got a backup of all the EEPROMs. It's always a good thing to do, since I don't have a copy of these ones. These are 1985, and there's no records of 1985 EEPROMs lying around. So I thought I'll grab the 1985 set, and I'll put those online as well, so as a backup for somebody else. Anyway, I just read this EEPROM and it comes out as being blank. I've read it several times, I've tried reseating the IC and all sorts of stuff, I've definitely got the right IC selected. It says it's blank. That's concerning. So what I'll do now is I'll pull these ones out and see if I can read these. I hope so. So what I'm going to use as well is this adapter which I made up. Because these are 2532s, they've got a different pinout compared to standard. And you can use the 2732 setup on your programmer, but the pinout's different. So what we have to do is make an adapter. So what I've got is a piggybacked pair of IC sockets, two different types. This is a rolled pin and this is just a cheaper flat pin type. The reason I do use that is so I can fold the pins out the side. So on here the pins come out the side between the gap there. You see I've glued it together so it doesn't fall apart. Then you've got a crossover here. So pin 21 goes down to pin 20. Pin 20 goes down to pin 18. And pin 18 goes up to pin 21. So that's how it's wired up on there, soldered onto those pins. So that converts the pin out. That allows you to use a 2532 on a 2732 set up on your programmer. So I read the EEPROM and that's fine, I've backed that one up. That's the M18 EEPROM. So I'm gonna do the same for the other two. So that means the fact that that one could read and the other ones could not, means that the GPIB EEPROM was obviously bad because these ones are readable, well at least that one was readable. So I'll get another one out and I'll do the same thing again, hopefully, there you go. I'll go and read this one. Well, that one read as well, so at least the uh, MPU board seems to be fine. That doesn't look like it's got any problems. 
So that's good. So just that uh, GPIB card, which might be why I'm getting some weird errors on here, because the GPIB board can't communicate with it. So what I might do is actually unplug that board and um, try seeing again, see if I can get it to work. Alright, so that down. Because it could just be that's what's wrong. And the GPIB board is this one here. So unplug this. And I'll power it up again, see if it does anything different. Okay, let's turn the power switch on. Error OL, no different there. Okay, it's still a test. Error 5, it's no different. And pass, and error OL. So nothing's changed there. The change ranges. No, nothing's changed. So it hasn't actually improved it by doing that. Um, nothing else is wanting to work, so oh well, it wasn't that. Actually, I got mixed up. Not on this unit, on, the, on my other unit. I said it's 1986 on that one. It's not, it's 1985. It's actually got exactly the same part numbers for these chips here. So on the EPROMs, they've got the same date and the same um, part numbers on here. This has got a date of 15th of August 85. My other unit has got a date of 14th of August 85. They're like a day apart. I wonder what chance of that are. Alright, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try adjusting the L2 over here. So let's put this on hold, let's do it in hold mode. And right now the voltage is jumping everywhere, so I'm sure that's actually wrong. So let's get a screwdriver, which I can use on here, and we should adjust it. What I'm aiming for is 1.05 volts. And I have to move it quite a bit on the other one. So it's almost as though someone just wound it all the way out. And this one was looking the same way. Nowhere near it yet. I'm not getting a stable reading at all. Oh, start getting something. One point zero six can be within 0.03, so 1.06 is close enough. Okay, let's do another test. Does that change anything? Error 5 is still there. Next one passes. Error OL is still there. So no, it didn't change anything. Oh well. So something I'm noticing is that you've got these two voltage regulators down here for the plus and minus 15 volt rails. The one on this side is getting really hot. The heatsink's so hot I can't touch it. And that probably goes in line with that issue I've got with the high current being drawn, that 32 watts or whatever is coming out of it. So I think it's dissipating 10 watts somewhere. Now the first suspicion would be tantalum caps. I've unplugged the digital board, I've unplugged the analog board in case it's a passive problem on those. And those didn't change anything. Well, it did drop it slightly, but it's still oh, quite high load. It's only I think it dropped it down by about six watts and like. There's still something in here drawing quite a bit of power. I just got to figure out what it is. So the next thing I've done is I've unplugged this input board over here. Um, that's completely disconnected now, apart from the input which passes in and out, goes through relays and comes back out again back to here. So that's what that's actually doing. So that's, the power supply side is disconnected. So what I'll do is I'll try it again and see if that does anything. And it is now drawing 20 watts. So yes, yeah, something on this board here. We're shorting out and overloading the power supply. Or at least, yeah, maybe not shorting, but certainly overloading. So that's down 20 watts now. That's more like what I was expecting it to be doing. So yes, this input board here has got some kind of problem. And if you remember, there was that bit of tape on there which said bad. Yes, bad. Is it a tantalum? It could be. There's some tantalums here. I've got to be careful about touching stuff because there's, there's 230 volts and stuff on this board here and down the sides and 180 volts or whatever it is down the sides. You have to be careful where you're touching this thing. Just because it's not at the bank doesn't mean it's not live. That's that problem solved, there's something wrong with this board here, which I'll get to later on, I'll just leave it disconnected for the time being. So if doing that change on the back here, disconnecting that board, I've now got a different error set up. Now I've got error 6 showing up. Wasn't getting that before. And error 7. So I'm getting error 5, error 6, error 7. Unless I left something else unplugged I shouldn't have left out. So I'll do the whole test again and show you the whole thing. So also testing the screen. Euro 5, Euro 6, which I wasn't getting before. 
error 7 and then pass and error OL unhold it, do I get anything else? oh yes AC just came on, that's the first time that's happened yay that's switching something's changed, I can actually get the switch between these now yay look at that, ohms is working as well now ok progress that board was obviously killing the power supply and making it not switch I'm getting somewhere ok so just now when I did the input filter I got error 4 up on the screen so let's have a look at that kind of in shot there you go, input filter, error 4 ok so I'm getting very serious at least I'm getting some progress I've got more life out of it than I had before right so I'm not really sure about what these are there was a meaning right now maybe it's calibrating again maybe it's lost calibration data because someone's done something to it silly I, I really don't know but um, at least it's drawing the right power now and it's looking a lot better well I've had a probe around on here and I can't find any shorts the transistors seem okay the tantalum seem okay uh, there's a diode across the top of this custom IC just here I'll try and get a closer shot for you Right, so I've measured across here, assuming that's the power supply, and there's no short. I can't find any shorts on here. But obviously, there's some kind of problem. I've measured these diodes as well, obviously. Something's wrong somewhere. I don't know what. It could be there's pinched wires. Maybe it's cut through or something down there. It's got relay connections and things like that. So now I've completely disabled that board. Obviously, I've pulled the power before. Now I've actually removed the input and output connections. So completely disabled it. So that is not used at all. There's no input output switching. Input from the front panel down here. Cables run along here. They come out the back and normally plug into this board here when you've got this installed but you've also got the connections on the back of this board so I've now plugged them directly into this board instead so that is completely bypassing, it's not used at all we'll see if that changes in the error codes we're getting well it's exactly the same, there's no difference here, same error codes as the last time I showed you, error 5, 6 and 7 and error 4 if I do the filter thing yep, error 4, no difference there but I think there's probably a problem on this board because it does have a bad label here so that's probably true can I find any hot chips or anything? So nothing's hot. Tantalums, fill a ride. I don't know about power supply voltages, that sort of stuff yet. I need to check all that yet. So far, nothing obvious. If anyone wants to give me a uh, decent Fleur or similar thermal camera, you know, some company wants to sponsor me like Fleur, you know, if you want to supply me a free camera, that'd be great. It's always really handy for this sort of thing. I've got a thermal camera but it's only 32 by 32 resolution, it's a bit crap. Nothing obvious. So these heat sinks aren't getting that hot anymore, they're normal. Right? They're a bit warm, that's about it. Right? So that's this one's cooler than this one which is interesting, I thought it would be a balanced supply. And the other one down there for the 5 volt rail seems fine too. So they're not overheating anymore, I'm comfortable that that's ok, so there's definitely something wrong with this board in the back. I'll have to pull that out at some point and figure that out. I'm not too worried about it right now, they're not going to be using it anyway, so yeah, who cares. But I would obviously like to restore it at some point. First things first, get the thing working somehow. So the repair on this thing is going to be like a video series, I think. Just like the other unit, which I'm also fixing or have been fixing, or I'm not sure how which sequence you're going to see these things in. I probably see the other one first. I really don't know. So yeah, there'll be probably a few videos on this. So make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon, that sort of stuff, to get notifications about when I do new videos. You get to see them as they come out. I don't want you to miss them, and you know I'm sure you, if you find repairs interesting, then you probably don't want to miss them either. So I have a copy of the IEEE EEPROM from a different year so I've put it onto an EEPROM since the original one is empty. I'm going to put that in there I'm going to power it up and see if that changes anything. I'll plug it back in again obviously because that kind of needs to be plugged in. Alright let's power it up and see what happens. Here at OL. Same as before. Do another test. See if everything's different. I'll be surprised. Euro 5, Euro 6, Euro 7, and pass. So, nothing different there. Alright, so I just reread that chip I tried in here, the one with the rewritten code, and um, it's not blown, it still reads fine and compares with the original code, so plugging it into here hasn't damaged that chip, so that's a good sign, I suppose.